Really, the Samuel Johnson story is very interesting. It is, though. It's true. I mean, I was like, really? And nobody ever liked him. He couldn't get a, a job because he didn't have a degree. So once he did this dictionary, they gave him a master's degree. And it was all good. And he married a lady 20 years older. She what? was like the original cougar. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the original cougar. <laughs> yeah. First, I want to share some stuff about our English language and how it kind of came about that we spell things so strangely and we do stuff kind of oddly. And the person we can thank for that, his name is Samuel Johnson. And he was around in the 1700s and he was actually the first, well, not really the first person, but he was the person that made what became the popular English dictionary. And he has an interesting story because he was born um, in 1709 and then his mom something happened she couldn't nurse him or whatever so she put him they say put him out to nurse and somebody with a form of tuberculosis nursed him and he had all kinds of issues he became mostly blind deaf had um, smallpox and was very deformed um, in a lot of different ways um, so he had a lot of issues in his life and you know mental instability and physical obviously instability and he was poor and destitute most of his whole life but he ended up making what became the most popular English dictionary that was published in 19 or 1755. It was published in 1755, and people around the world they had um, in different countries had made dictionaries. They had had literally thousands of scholars work for 70 years on one dictionary, um, in in all kinds of uh, major work. And this man did it in nine years with you know just six different people that were part-time help for him, basically. So he published this dictionary in 1775, and it's much of how we spell today and, um, and what we use, you know, still, um, interestingly. And finally, by then, he became, um, somewhat had some money, but he wasted money well, apparently. So he's, he's famous in England because of him making that dictionary. So then fast forward about until the early 1800s and we have Noah Webster and of course we had just gone through the Revolutionary War and we wanted to distance ourselves further from England so um, Noah Webster made the first American dictionary and he changed things so instead of spell spelling color with the O-U-R as the er at the end we changed it to O-R and, and made different definitions in the American way of spelling things so those two men really had a main impact on what we do today with reading and writing and spelling and it's interesting because in schools, most of you um, or your children or even yourselves have learned what's called inventive spelling, where we're asking our five-year-olds to invent the spelling system, which is kind of weird because they were asking thousands of scholars to do it over you know, 70 years, and we're asking these little kids to, to reinvent the spelling system. So we don't need to do that. So we're excited about Ebley and what it can do so that your kids don't have to reinvent the wheel that's already spent a lot of time and energy um, you know, on reinventing it. So in in the English language, what we did too is we borrowed from a lot of different countries. And so instead of having one way to spell a sound, like the sound A, there's about 12 different ways to spell the sound A. And we took it from a bunch of different countries and the ways they spell it. The sound sh is the winner, and that one, there's 17 different ways to spell the sound sh. So how do you deal with this really complex language um, and make it easy and logical for anybody who wants to learn it? And that's what we are here to show you how to do. And there's some really simple concepts um, as well as some skills that you have to have. So I'm going to show you one of these concepts on our whiteboard that will tell you about uh, one of the unique things about the English language. 